A loss can really be pivotal, and a fighter can go one way or another. We will see what Tommy Morrison has. To meet him, here's Michael Buffett. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated in association with the undisputed King of Beer, Budweiser presents the featured bout of the evening. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Luther Mack, Commissioners Nat Carasali, Dr. Elias Gunham, Bruce Lane, and Dr. James Nave, Executive Director Chuck Minker, Physicians at Ringside, Dr. Robert Voy and Dr. William Berliner, the Timekeepers, James Cavan and Mike Lachella. The three judges scoring this bout will be Jerry Roth, Dick Halk, and Hal Miller. And before we continue, ladies and gentlemen, a very special introduction to a man seated behind me here at ringside. He's the all-time winningest coach in the history of college basketball on percentage basis. Ladies and gentlemen, the head coach of UNLV, Hark the Shark, Jerry Tarkanian. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the Las Vegas Hilton here at Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Ten rounds of boxing. This is in the heavyweight division. The referee for this contest is Richard Steele. Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, he's wearing the green trunks and weighs in at an even 220 pounds from Bakersfield, California. His professional record is 10, 10 and 2, seven of his 10 victories by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby the Scientist Quarry. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the blue corner wearing the black and red trunks and weighing in at an even 222 pounds. He comes to us from Kansas City. His professional record, 28 victories. 24 by KO, only one defeat. Introducing Tommy, the Duke Morrison. All right, Tommy. Okay, Tommy, Bobby, I gave both of you guys instruction in the dressing room. I want to obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Shake hands, good luck. There's a look at Tommy Morrison. Well, if bodies win fights, I know where this one's going. Right. There's the before. <laughs> uh, I wonder what he's going to look like after. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, Bobby Corey is a guy who we know can get you out of there, but you have the feeling that he could be the receivee here. Yes, and uh, he does have the quarry problem of cutting very badly, sometimes at the opening instructions, which is not going to help him. Bad idea. That's really Morrison's bread and butter punch. Morrison says he wants to box a little bit more. You know, if this fight goes a little bit so we can talk about Tommy, it's a very interesting study. You know, his loss to Mercer is one of the biggest arguments I could make for the psychological aspect of boxing. Because he fought three perfect rounds against Ray. And then completely unraveled. <laughs> He really doesn't have an explanation for it. I don't think he's going to find any answers here tonight. But, I mean, that's something that could cause him a problem anytime he goes up against an opponent that can withstand his punching power. Really did surprise me, I have to admit. In that fight, and I've said this a million times, Ray Mercer made a believer out of me. I just did not believe he would win that fight. And that shows you what I know. Well, it was a very, very tough fight to pick. I mean, everybody, just about, most of the boxing experts you would speak to thought it was a toss-up. And, uh, you know, Morrison's a great puncher, but he does have that tendency to come apart if he doesn't get his man out of there right away. And we had seen it against uh, Yuri Valulin last year. That fight, he did win, but he was very close. He was on the verge to coming apart because he was in the fifth round, was not knocking his man out. He was getting tired. Yeah, I thought he might have learned something from that fight, actually. And, and that was a little bit of an unusual situation in that he was a left-hander and he was a little bit unorthodox. And I could make a lot of excuses for Tommy Morrison in that fight. Well, I discussed, you know, the Mercer fight with Tommy this morning, and he said, I had never hit anybody as hard as I hit Mercer in my life. My hands were hurting. So that tells you something right there. Everything was going his way, and Mercer was still there. 
uppercut and shot to the body by Morrison. And again, Quarry will try to fight Morrison for better or worse. Quarry actually didn't cover up badly on the ropes there. Well, it really is Morrison who has something to prove here, probably more than Quarry. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Quarry is not expected to win this fight. Let's be honest. He's a 10 and 10 fighter against a guy who's 28 and 1. Morrison's got everything to lose. So to Bobby Quarry's credit, he's through the first round, and he didn't lose it badly, if at all. When what you eat and drink gives your stomach... And just when it looked like Bobby Quarry had made it out safely, here's the final five seconds of round one, and Mercer really working him over. And there's a cut from someplace, and I honestly can't quite tell where on Bobby Quarry. But he came out from his corner bleeding. It may have been from a cutting remark from one of his corners, or from us. There's a right hand by Quarry. And that's his bread and butter shot. We saw him knock out uh, that other opponent, Dave Kilgore, with it. That's the punch he wants to land. There was the uppercut. That's the punch that really did the problem for him at the end of the first round. Morrison missed with that uppercut. Yo, in all fairness to Bobby Quarry, his only shot really is just to punch it out with Morrison. Hope he gets lucky. Morrison just loading up now. He's forgetting about the jab. You know, he had also told me that he wanted to box a bit more today and prove to himself that he could go the distance. I don't think this is the fight he's going to do that. Anymore. Actually, that cut is from the chin. Yeah, a whole place. Yeah. Right hand, down he goes. Crashing right hand. I don't think he's Three. getting up. That's it. Over. Down. He's out. Well, you don't draw it up any more perfect than that one. My quarry is hardly moved. And they will keep Quarry down. And now he sits up. He appears to be okay. He was on the receiving end of quite a right hand. And then they get Corey up slowly. They'll put him on a stool now. He's still a little bit wobbly, and that was a big-time shot. There's no question about that. Perfectly set up by the jab also. Yeah, it's interesting. Just when we said he was forsaking the jab. Right. Take a look at it right here as a jab, and then right behind it, here it comes. Quarry <clears throat> never saw it coming. Great shot. Okay, here it is, two light jabs, and then right about on the ear. Perfect shot. Let's get the official word from Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Richard Steele calls a halt to the bout. At one minute and 29 seconds of the second round, the winner by TKO victory, Tommy the Duke Morrison. Well, Tommy Morrison is a winner. And he's a winner with an impressive right hand. There's no question about that. And he did use the jab to set it up. That's something he wanted to do. When we come back, we'll talk to the Duke. Morrison has won the main event. I will remind you that Big Monday coming your way. When else? Monday. It'll be Pitt and Seton Hall. Seton Hall really starting to be a player. They are playing very, very well right at the moment. That gets us underway live, 7.30 Eastern time, then to the Big Gate, where it'll be Nebraska and Missouri and Anthony Peeler. And then out to the Big West. It'll be Long Beach State and Fresno State. That gets underway at midnight. And also, it's President's Day, so we got the President's Game. James Madison and George Washington. That precedes Pitt and Seton Hall. Chock full of basketball on Big Monday. Right now, let's get to the center of the ring, Wally Matthews. Well, all right, the Duke lets his Dukes do the talking tonight. Tommy, you said you wanted to kind of work your way back from the Mercer loss. You wanted to do a little boxing tonight. Obviously, Bobby Quarry didn't give you a chance to do much of that. Is this what you wanted tonight? Well, I think we started off to using our jab a little bit. Uh, we did result a little bit of power there, and I tried to back off and, and try to establish my jab a little bit and try to show more boxing skills rather than walk out there and club someone down. I mean, everybody knows I can do that. I like to display some boxing skills. I think I did a little bit in this fight. I'm looking forward to doing more of that in the, in the future fights. All right, well, we'll take a look at the knockout punch here, and it was set up by the jab. Tell us what's happening. 
Right here, we're jabbing right here. I notice he's, he, at this time he's starting to get a little low, and he drops uh, his head without without covering him, covering his head with his with his hands. He kind of bends at his waist rather than his knees, and I think that was pretty much the end for him. And actually, at the end of the first round, you were hitting him pretty well with left hooks and right uppercuts, and I was kind of surprised that he stood up to it. Well, he, he uh, as you know, all the quarries are, I think, noted for being tough, and uh, these type of guys that uh, get kind of offended if you don't hit them, and uh, <laughs> we did a little bit of that. And uh, he's, he's a tough guy. He took some good shots to the body. I was uh, real surprised that he stood up to that. Well, obviously, you did not offend him here tonight, but one thing I must ask you is, you needed a confidence builder after the Mercer loss, but what does a fight like this really teach you about yourself? Well, at this point, I don't think it teaches a whole lot about myself that all the learning I'm learning about myself at this point is in the gym but this fight although I feel was a proper fight for us coming back off the defeat we had and uh, now we're looking to take another step up and, uh, and keep uh, stepping up until we get to the title all right well Tommy Morrison comes back with a knockout off that loss to Ray Mercer now back to Barry at ringside all right thanks very much Wally and thanks to Tommy the Duke pretty good performance for him against Bobby Corey confidence builder and believe me after the loss to Ray Mercer he needed it back with more after this